And they said, look, it's going to be Caleb Plant in September. And by the way, we got some, some AJ news coming out next week. What's up, Barnhill family? Welcome back to the channel. Yo, yo. And happy Mother's Day to all you moms out there. Nick and I are both well aware that this channel is like 98% guys, but for the 2% of you ladies out there that are watching, we wish you a very happy Mother's Day. Yep. So Nick, uh, what an incredible boxing event last night. Yeah. 73,000 fans in Dallas, Texas. Canelo Alvarez, Billy Joe Saunders, two incredibly prolific, excellent fighters mm -hmm. in their prime. Eddie Hearn said it best. Last night was a perfect example of the magic that can happen when boxing gets it right. Yeah, I think everybody needs a moment to clap yes, for boxing. Very boxing much. did a, a great thing last night. And I was so impressed with the performance of both of the fighters. I think that was a great fight. It was competitive while it lasted. And I, I, I also think the promotion needs a lot of credit. That was a really well put together show. I enjoyed watching it. You know, when you, when you watch sports, you don't really think of it as entertainment because you're watching something and it's a little bit different than what you would consider a movie or, or a, but a, a TV series or something. But this is a show and that yeah. was a well put on show. I even love the walkouts. The walkouts were great. I mean, it's Cinco de Mayo weekend yeah. for Canelo Alvarez, the biggest superstar in Mex athletic superstar in Mexico right now, to come out. Mm -hmm. uh, the music, the dancing, it was phenomenal. The, e even Billy Joe's walkout was cool. Yeah, yeah. he's kind of out there by himself. He's this big stage, and then there's this little guy on, on the stage. Yeah. But uh, it was cool nonetheless. Uh, the promotion was great. The arena was perfect. Everything was, was great. And then the fight itself was fantastic. Yeah. You know, what we see a lot of times in boxing is certain fights not happen and not materialize for years after their expiration date or when it's not as enticing as it was. But when you have an undefeated guy like Billy Joe Saunders, who's presents something new, he's a southpaw, he's got a, a tremendous jab, his boxing skill and IQ is very, very high against a guy who's the biggest guy in the sport right now, Canelo, and you make the fight happen when it's supposed to happen, magic happens. And yeah. I think the fight itself uh, what, what was kind of a, a shining example of that. Yeah. What we saw in the first round was Canelo, not the first couple of rounds, Canelo takes some time to figure out Billy Joe. Uh, Billy Joe was, was working a jab and he was looking very crisp with his jab. Yeah. Uh, Canelo was also very mindful of the foot placement because when you have a, an orthodox fighter against a southpaw, the battle really takes place on whose foot, whose Front lead foot, foot can yeah. get to the outside of the others. And you saw Canelo make some really nice adjustments in those first couple of rounds with Billy Joe trying to get the advantage and get to the side of Canelo and land the shots. Um, it was a very high level chess match of a boxing fight. And ultimately, it was Canelo's power and, and persistence and pressure that won him the fight. And man, he's, he's at the point now where he's just touching you with shots and yeah. breaking your orbitals. I mean, he, he might be the scariest guy in boxing right now. Yeah, and he looked really good out there. Yeah. You know, you got to give a lot of credit to Billy Joe Saunders because the first round he looked good, and then it kind of looked like Canelo was going to start to put it on him. And then come round four, round uh, I guess round four, he came out with a confidence that we yeah. hadn't seen in the earlier rounds and looked really good. He looked really fresh. He looked like he was having fun. And that's yeah. where I thought he looked the best in the entire fight is when he started to put his hands down, which is pretty dangerous against a guy like Canelo, but put his hands down, move a little bit, make Canelo miss, slip, and roll, and, and do the things that we love Billy Joe Saunders doing. And he looked really good in there. And for me... I always love a boxing match that is a little bit back and forth. And I understand that of the eight rounds that happened, Canelo won the majority of them. Yeah. And, and he was going to win that fight if it continued on, in my opinion. But Billy Joe won some rounds. He won some minutes. He won some exchanges. And he made Canelo work. He made Canelo think. And that's something that I, I really did enjoy watching because it makes you realize that you know, Canelo, while he is the best boxer in the world, there are people that can hang with him. There's people that can be competitive with him. And that's what it's all about. You know, Canelo probably loved that fight because it brought the, the Mexican warrior out of him. It made him work a little bit harder, dig a little bit deeper. And it, it gave us, the fans, a great fight to enjoy. And uh, I, I'm sure all 73-plus thousand people that were in Dallas Cowboys Stadium were just loving every minute of that fight. 
Yeah, and you, uh, I mean, I was loving it from the couch. Yeah. So I can only imagine the energy that oh. was in that stadium, especially, you know, we've had all this pent up energy because we haven't really had live events. You know, the UFC has come back and they're doing a live event here in Houston. They did one in Jacksonville. Now we've got Texas and Florida sort of opening back up and making mm -hmm. us feel like uh, it's 2019 again. Yeah, um, it felt which, really normal. Yeah, which, which is great. But, you know, the, the thing that was really interesting to me was very rarely do you get the opportunity to see Canelo Alvarez frustrated in the boxing ring. Yeah. And he was frustrated at times with Billy Joe. Billy Joe was landing a great jab. He would almost, you know, step inside. Uh, you know, they're playing that outside foot game. And then he would step inside, land a crisp jab. And then he would step forward with his back leg and land a power two. Yeah. Almost for a split second, they're switching into an orthodox stance and then hooking to the body. It was a very interesting technique that he was implementing and he was landing it he was yeah. landing some very crisp shots on canelo and then at the same time canelo was trying to find a power right uppercut yeah. and he was looking for it multiple times and he missed it multiple times ultimately he landed some really cr clean shots and figured billy joe out but there were some moments of frustration in there with for canelo which we haven't seen in his last couple fights he's looked flawless he's looked like he can't be touched he looks like you know, a, a guy that has an answer for every problem. Mm -hmm. And although he did have the answer for the Billy Joe Saunders puzzle, ultimately, it took him a while to figure it out. And so watching him figure out the puzzle, it was yeah. almost like he took a... Uh, uh, a card out of the deck of his old nemesis Floyd Mayweather and, and download the information yeah. of a tough opponent for the first few rounds and then begin to exploit it thereafter. But this was all just, just a great fight. And one of the things I really love and that boxing I think misses a lot of times is when you have a great fight like that and 70,000 people in the stands and millions of people watching at home, that's the perfect opportunity to set something up for the next you event. And Eddie Hearn did a beautiful job of that. Usually they, they'll say, ah, oh, you know, Whoever, whoever wants to fight me next can fight me. And the promoter will say, yeah, we'll fight anybody and everybody. And while that's kind of the MO and the script for boxing, it, it doesn't really work all that well. What works is tell me who you want to fight right. next. Tell me when it's going to happen and make me excited about it before I change the channel on my TV. Right. And they said, look, it's going to be Caleb Plant in September. And by the way, we got some, some AJ news coming out next week. So I think Eddie Hearn needs some credit here. He did a beautiful job last night of being a true boxing promoter. Yeah, and when you look at selling fights, social media in today's world plays a huge role. But it still doesn't trump the, the live event. You know, if you have a microphone in your hand, there's 73,000 people sitting there waiting to hear what you're saying, plus the, all the millions in the world listening, you get to tell them exactly what's coming next, when it's coming and where it's coming. And that, that gives them something to look forward to. Uh, the, the problem with people that, you know, really support all sports or are, they're the casuals, they don't pay that close attention on social media. And even though you can put a tweet out and it gets, you know, half a million retweets and that that's considered a, a great success of a tweet or, you know, some sort of fight promotion, something like that. It doesn't replace actually the live event take, you know, making the announcement and doing it right yeah. then and there in front of everybody. You always sell your next show at the one that you just finished up before you, you know, bring the curtains down and send everybody home. Yeah. Make, make sure you send them home with one last little gift, which is something to look forward to. And Eddie Hearn certainly did that. Uh, you know, you, you got, you had Tyson Fury standing in the corner with Billy Joe Saunders. So obviously people are looking at him and they're, you know, he's the tallest guy in the arena. Probably they're like, oh man, I can't wait to see him do something again soon. Hopefully it's against AJ. And when they kind of brought up AJ and, and Eddie's a smart guy, he's like, you know, Canelo is the biggest star in the sport, him and AJ. Yeah. Are the, and that's how they kind of trickled it in. And, and you see Tyson Fury there, your brain starts to do the math. And he's like, by the way, we have some news on that next week, but Canelo be, will be back in September guaranteed. Exactly. So, so now the fans, all of the people are captivated by mm -hmm. this incredible performance that just happened. Probably the best boxing show of the year for sure far and away thus far. And now we have, okay, in the fall, we're going to get another great Canelo show, even if it's October and not September, who cares? Yeah. We set it up for something great coming next. And now people are going to say, hold on, if I'm a casual fan, obviously we know who Caleb Plant is, but certain people might not. Right. And so they say, well, I, I love Canelo, but I don't know who this Caleb Plant is. And then they go look and say, wow, this guy's bodied up. He's, got he's a, undefeated. He's got a yeah, he's got a belt. Uh, this is the guy he's fighting next, this mm -hmm. guy from Tennessee. Okay, uh, sign me up for that. And yeah. So I think they did a brilliant job of it last night. 
I think the one kind of downside to it all is, and I feel horrible for Billy Joe in this situation, is that a lot of people were booing him, and a lot of people on social media have said that he didn't show the heart of a champion, that he quit. Billy in their Joe last, Quitter, yeah. Yeah, Billy Joe Quitter. Um, I really didn't agree with that at all. No. I mean, Billy Joe Saunders had his orbital broken. His eye was closed. He can't see out of the eye. He went straight to the hospital. Yeah, it, it, to put it in MMA terms, for all you MMA fans watching out there, that's a doctor stoppage TKO. Yeah. And doctor, you know, if a doctor comes in and says, can you see out of this eye, and they hold their fingers up or do whatever sort of testing yeah. that is required, uh, and you cannot accurately give them the correct answers to their questions they will stop the fight yeah. i think billy joe's corner did the right thing i mean you're, you're talking about a fighter that was getting tagged with heavy shots by canelo when he could see with both eyes and now you've got a broken orbital and yeah. vision coming only out of one eye the only thing that's going to happen in that situation is your fighter's going to get seriously or god forbid permanently injured yeah. uh and, and not be able to fight again so uh, he's in surgery today yeah the Billy Joe Saunders has the heart of a champion. He is a warrior, uh, and this this doesn't tarnish his record at all no. in my eyes, but it did in some people's, which I don't think that's a fair assessment. Yeah, and it was a tough loss. You know, yeah. he, what he was doing was he kept doing that what uh, exchange that you were talking about where he'd move in, and he's, he was doing a lot of heavy slipping, and that's where Canelo was looking for his, his uppercut, and it was smart for Canelo not to abandon that game plan. He knew with Billy Joe's style that he was going to be bending down a lot and there's probably going to be an uppercut there. It was hard for him to find, but yeah. he stuck to his game plan. And, you know, since it was working for Billy Joe Saunders, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. You know, if something's working, even if it's unorthodox, keep doing it all night until they can figure it out. Canelo did end up figuring it out. And when you're moving your head down at the same direction that the uppercut's coming, especially from a guy like Canelo, it's tr trouble's going to happen. Yeah. And that bone was clearly broken. It, anybody who's tweeting at Billy Joe Saunders or saying, you know, crap on the internet, they, they need to go fight about eight or nine rounds with Canelo. And, and once their orbital bone breaks, they should try, you know, answer the bell. And if they do, if it, you know, if they're like, Oh, well, no, I'm tough enough to do it. The people in your corner that love you, that care about you would be fools not to stop the fight because you yep. want to see, you know, the fighter safety is the most important thing. And Billy Joe, obviously, if his eye was, you know, even if it was so shut completely, he would probably still go out there. But his team knew exactly what they were looking at, and it was only going to get worse from there. You know, Canelo, when it, it sounds pretty brutal, but in, in combat sports, boxing, MMA, when somebody has a, a, an injury and it's noticeable and the person just did it to them. Exploit it. Yeah. As, as, as brutal as it sounds, Canelo would have come looking for that right eye yep. and he would have started hitting it. And that's exactly what he's supposed to do. But that's, you, that's where you'll wind up with permanent damage, like you said. And I think that the corner for Billy Joe did the right thing. He'll live to fight another day. And anybody that wants to talk smack on Twitter, they should go you know, take some of those uppercuts from, from Canelo and see just how many bells they want to answer. No doubt. The, the, the corners are there to, you know, first and foremost, to coach you and prepare you per correctly, but they're also there to be the adults in the room. Yeah. Every boxer, you know, with very few exceptions, is a warrior and it has the heart of a champion. So you have to rely on the people that love you and care about you to do the right thing at the right time. And I think Billy Joe's corner definitely did that. Yeah, absolutely. But, I I was I was really impressed with Billy Joe's uh, craftiness in there, and I I would love to see him, you know, maybe work his way back into a fight with Canelo yeah. because because of the controversial finish that you know it was a clear TKO or I guess they'll call it a KO. I'm not really sure how the, how they label it, but um uh, yeah um retirement stool retirement stool I believe retirement. is in boxing how they officially label it. Yeah yeah well you know there's there's a way that a storyteller, a promoter could probably spin that. And after a few more wins, maybe he goes and collects a title or something like that, that you could redo this fight. And I feel like people would get behind a, a second match against these two guys because it didn't end in a, in a TKO or KO stoppage. And this is a beautiful example of what we always say about why holding on to that. O is so stupid in yeah. boxing and it stagnates a lot of stuff because Billy Joe Saunders now has gotten rid of his O he's got, one loss on his mm -hmm. record but guess what I'm watching whatever Billy Joe does for the rest of his career I was blown away by his performance I was blown away by the fight I was blown away by the promotion and you know I'm, a, I'm I walk away from that happy 
and a fan of both fighters. Yeah, I'm a big fan. I can't wait to see what both of these guys do next. And I hope that uh, Canelo gets to unify that belt with Caleb Plant in September. It sounds like that's what's going to happen, but uh, hopefully boxing doesn't throw us a little curveball right before the show goes on. I know, and you know we'll break that fight down if it gets announced. Absolutely. Guys, thanks so much for watching our videos. If you've enjoyed the content, we always appreciate a like, comment, and subscribe. And let us know in the comments, do you think the Caleb Plant versus Canelo fight happens next? And what should be next for Billy Joe Saunders? Thanks so much for watching, guys, and we will catch you in the next video. Have a great day. Peace.